In Israel, I love just the natural side of it. You see it. You can walk up to the grapevine. You can walk up to the olive tree. You can walk up to the acacia tree, and it's just there. The lessons are right there. But this tree, I, it bothered me for a while because I couldn't understand it. It's a weird tree. If you look at the trunk, it looks old. Scratched, dented, knotted up. It's a weird-looking tree. But if you look at the canopy, it looks young, vibrant, bright green. And inside of it are these pods, these beans that are growing. This is what you see in the biblical story when it talks about locusts. This is a locust tree. So John the Baptist is out in the backside of the desert eating locusts and wild honey. Interpret that as he's eating carob beans and devosh, honey from dates. So it's a date jam and this. You can eat them raw or you can grind them up. And those of you that are health conscious, you've probably actually seen this before. They will take the beans, grind them up, and put them into flour and make bread. So John the Baptist is eating bread and jam. <laughs> Story doesn't sell nearly as much as locusts and honey. Not saying that he didn't eat honey and, and locusts. He may have. Just locusts are oddly not in that area. <laughs> but these, these trees and these locust pods, it's a tree that takes a really, really long time to grow. You probably remember the book, The Circle Maker. He was, it says that he was walking through a village and he saw a, a man planting a carob tree. And says, what are you doing? He's like, I'm planting a carob tree. He's like, don't you realize like, you're like 80 years old. Why are you planting a carob tree? It, it's not going to grow fast enough for you to, to eat of its fruit. And the man said, when I was born and walked this land, my grandparents had planted carob trees for me. So I'm planting carob trees for them. In America, we push things so hard. We want it to be now. But the stages of fruit bearing are often very, very long. We want it now. We want it all. And in church, it's hard not to do the same. Let's focus on new fruit production but we're not looking at this 100-year-old vine and realizing the depth, the undertones, the time that it was spent in the seasons now to bear forth this fruit. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall bear fruit in old age. They shall be fresh and flourishing. To declare, declare the Lord is upright. He is my rock, and there is no unrighteousness in him. I see this over and over again that we look at the older saints. I'm not saying here, but I'm just saying as a movement, as a church, you hit 55, you hit 60, and we look at it saying we need new young blood in here. We need this new, new, this new wave. And I think God the gardener is going, but it's just getting good. It's, it's just getting those, those deep, heavy things in it. It's the season that the production can be amazing. And those of us that have been around the older saints, we realize they're just filled with amazing wisdom. You sit with them, you talk with them, and you realize the depth that's there. But we try to rush it. We try to push it. So who's responsible for the fruit? Why did God create seasons? And what do we need to do? We dwell in Him. No quotas, no production schedules, no fruit shaming, no guilt, not ours to worry about.